Good morning, crew. So we're just heading out to the grounds. Gonna lay out some gear. Uh, got a few preparations left to make on the deck here. Just put together our uh, bait table and uh, get the buoys and anchors ready. So we'll do that now. board here fresh pollock some leftover salmon from last year which hopefully is still pretty good some cod mixed in there hopefully the fish are biting and hungry so I guess we'll get this party started yep okay let her go so we'll start by just trailing out some buoy line we're in about 70 fathoms here, so need to lay out enough to get us down to the bottom. And then we'll attach an anchor. We have marks on our line every 25 fathoms. These are 100 fathom shots, so <clears throat> we can kind of gauge how much we have out on each shot. It makes it a lot easier. Twist knot there and a half inch. Square knot. So then just let dad get into position, launch the anchor. Throw the anchor. So as you can see, the two tubes here, it's kind of like a safety feature. You just slip your bait in there, then there's Absolutely no chance it can come back and hook me. And spacing around 15 feet. hit the bottom. You can see it slows down a lot.
we're just gonna kind of set it along the edge here weave it back and forth a little bit through a couple of different depths um probably between oh the mid 50s and and 80 fathoms just kind of try and cover a little bit of depth so we can see this is the first time we've been out so i want to try and see if the fish are in any particular depth sometimes i'll kind of stay in a tight gradient like that one thing i do need to do is get this tossed overboard this is a bird avoidance device so we're required to trail it sometimes it gets tangled up in our long line and then we gotta stop and deal with it but <clears throat> it's designed to keep the birds from getting your baits as they go down we'll also drop a weight on once in a while and that helps pull the line down faster if we get lots of bird on the line but we usually don't get too many birds bugging us you gotta throw a rock on there. So I'll have Matt clip a rock on every once in a while if we're on a sharp edge, either coming up or going down. Try and hold that weight right there. <clears throat> Keep it from being stretched out over the over the dip. So we have about 800 hooks spanned, maybe 900. Ah, just lost the bait. Ah. Sometimes the snaps won't snap on the line and they'll pop off. That's annoying. So a pretty simple laid back operation here. mark every once in a while so when we're hauling our gear if we start to get into a little slug of fish I can come in here and look and kind of see where we are in relation to the set that we laid out and what depth that we're in and just kind of gives us a better idea of, of where we're at and hopefully where the where the fish are you can see that's a nice little hill right there this is kind of hard bottom right here and then it will get muddy again and other than that have a log book that I have to fill out since we're under 40 foot our log books are really simple um, <clears throat> it's really just the position uh, how long your set is the date it's set out the date it's hauled time hauled is optional if you want to put it there I do just to kind of keep track how long we soak our gear um, the number of skates or the length of, of line that you lay out your target species, which in this case is halibut, and your estimated catch. Okay, I think we're gonna cut this set off soon. Uh, probably after the next one that goes out here. Got about a, about 11 of these tubs out now. So we put about 12 on here. That's gonna be about 1.3 miles. Matt just ties a bowline and a bite, attaches anchor, I'll coil in this bird line. Even though it's floating line, you can still back over it. Five more fathoms of buoy line. Drop the anchor and off we go. But yeah, this is a sea link. Just a notch in each one. Turn them sideways and clip. Tie in the buoy and off she goes. So hopefully there's some fish down there. 
we'll probably give this oh i don't know maybe five six hours soak tide's flooding right now so the current's running this way and uh oh i think about one o'clock or something it'll switch and start ebbing and flowing back that way so usually that's good if you can fish it through a tide change like that try and get some fish on both sides of the, the line so we'll see what happens yep we're gonna lay out a couple more put one out here a ways put one over there a ways <laughs> yeah so we'll dry a couple more and come back and haul it when it's time we'll see you then Yep.